I recently released an updated elite skills overview for good faction, normal troops, standard troops, faction troops. I don't know what you want to call them. The ones that you can script normally and not hire T3 troops. We'll just call them that. And people were hoping that I would release an overview slash analysis on the neutral or hireable units for Tactics Evolved. So that's what this video will be. And let's get into it. We're actually going to start things off talking about cataphracts because in the first video I released, my cataphracts were undergoing elite training and therefore I was not able to actually pull up their skills. So at elite, at elite one, cataphracts have blessed armor. First three rounds, they take 25% reduced damage. This is an extremely good skill because the initial rounds of combat are so very important. It also pairs up nicely with the fact that cataphracts come with mounted and their other damage reduction fully armored or full plate armor, whatever the other one is where they take less damage from melee units. All in all, this winds up being a lot of mitigation, and because the game is snowball-y, it is a very, very strong skill. The other viable skill on them, in my opinion, is a Remedy. This makes them take extra healing, uh, extra healing received, and every single time they get healed, they do some extra damage. This is primarily good, in my opinion, on the Rohirrim commanders, because if you take their healing skills, which in most builds, except maybe some Aomer builds, so at least for Theoden and Aowen, you're going to be taking the skills that heal cavalry units every single round of combat. You could put a sustain pipe on them. You could put the healing reins on them, potentially depending on what items you have, for even more healing. Plus, Aowen herself has her round three heal. All in all, if your commander heals frequently, as in like every round of combat or more than once every round of combat, I think this is a very, very strong skill. You're going to be healing for 30% more, plus it's just a whole bunch of extra sources of damage, and I don't particularly think that armor break is a very good skill. Reducing defense by 20 for one round is like at absolute best going to be a 10% damage boost not a super fantastic damage boost, especially compared to some of the other damage output skills that come with Tactics Evolved. And of course, as they are men, they get Manish Speed, Manish Attack, and Disciplined. In general, I think Disciplined or Manish Attack on these guys is going to be the best. If you're using a Rohirrim Commander, you can actually take advantage of that attack. If you're going to be putting these guys on some type of Glass Cannon, damage dealing commander then they're going to be dying a lot and so probably you will want to be running disciplined so that you can conscript them faster and keep them queued up and moving on to the neutral units hireable units whatever you want to call them we will start things off with the pre riders unfortunately these guys have three niche elite skills light armor reduces the damage they take from melee units on rush increases the damage they do against range units and finesse reduces the damage they take from enemy commanders. So if you're fighting against glass cannon damage commanders, you're going to want finesse. If you're fighting against range units, you're going to want onrush. And if you're fighting against melee units, you're going to want light armor. Unfortunately, there's no great way to guarantee that whichever elite skill you have on these units is going to always make your Bree Riders better, unlike with Cataphracts, where you're just always going to be taking 25% less damage in those early rounds of combat, no matter what is hitting them. So Bree Riders are a bit awkward in terms of the elite skills. I don't think any one of these is definitively the best. It's going to completely depend on the metagame on your server and what you want them to be doing. In general, the safest pick is probably Light Armor, as the majority of armies in this game are going to contain melee units. Not every single commander is a glass cannon damage dealer. And there's no guarantee that your B-Riders are ever going to hit ranged units. I will say if you're using these on Aomer with his unique that allows his mounted units to snipe ranged units, then that becomes the obvious pick, but that is a pretty niche scenario overall. Moving on to Bjornings, I think that Toned Body is not super fantastic. The amount of dead soldiers in battles is reduced by 10%. This just means that you get more wounded, less dead, but it's not like a huge swing. It's only 10%. And it's a little bit, it looks a little bit worse, especially when you compare it to their Elite 2 skills, which are close quarters combat. This goes up to a 50% damage boost when there are only enemy ranged or melee units present. This is actually going to be quite useful quite often, particularly against evil factions that have a tendency to run a whole lot of melee units. 
And in Tactics Evolved, there are a lot of ranged units. Commanders like Faramir with Woses are very, very popular. I think that this certainly has many situations in which it is quite useful. And 50% bonus damage is very hard to argue with. That is a lot of extra bonus damage. And Indomitable is another fantastic choice. Even for just the first skill point in this, you get stun immunity. Obviously, if your commander brings stun immunity to the table via skills or items, you don't want to take this skill. However, if they don't bring stun immunity to the table, this is an absolutely fantastic choice. It also increases defense by 20. That part is not super exciting. Being stun immune is very, very solid. Oathbreakers have a couple of good choices. A dividing Conquer is always a fantastic skill. Significant Assault is also great because pretty much most of the time people are going to be using these guys on King of the Dead. And King of the Dead turns off healing, which means these, are, these guys are just always going to be dealing 30% extra damage since the enemies against King of the Dead can never recover HP. So very, very solid choice. And Armor Break, as I've already talked about, not a very good skill overall in my opinion. If you're using these on a Glass Cannon Damage Dealing Commander, I think Divide and Conquer is the way to go. In most cases, since you'll want to be using these on King of the Dead, potentially like Sauron maybe, uh, you know, if you, you're evil and you get access to them, uh, I believe he can make pretty good use of them. Then you might want to take a Significant Assault instead. Keepers, there is one easy choice here. Uh, it's not Traveling Light. I'll tell you the easy choice in a minute. I was just going to go through all their skills. Anyway, Traveling Light is just like Cavaliers. They take less damage from ranged units, and they can evade the first two attacks. The easy choice is Heartseeker. A 50% chance to gain follow-up is phenomenal. One of the best elite skills in the game. Uh, I can't really think of any situation where you wouldn't want to just take Heartseeker on these guys. And then they also have Parry, which gives a chance to take less melee damage and deal extra damage. But definitely, Heartseeker is the way you want to go on them. Seafarers are quite an underrated unit, in my opinion. I was looking at their stats somewhat recently. Since we got um, Dol Amroth on my server, I can just build a camp for them. And their stats are surprisingly decent, and their elite skills are quite solid as well. Light armor, boring, we've talked about that plenty of times. They also have Heartseeker, and we just talked about how Heartseeker is probably... I mean, it might be like the second best elite skill in the game. It is certainly up there super fantastic skill so i might mess around with these guys this season because of that but on top of that they also have remedy so on these very healing heavy commanders they can get extra healing and deal extra damage so a great option if you like running arwen potentially radagast even on gandalf the gray they could be solid as well in general though uh since Heartseeker is so fantastic i think most situations you would just want to run that for the 50 percent chance of follow-up dale watchman have a pretty easy choice as well light armor talked about that plenty of times precise shot a very niche skill and that it only is active against mounted units and there really aren't that many mounted commanders running around anymore i mean some people still use theoden i'm one of the crazy people that still uses cavalry commanders uh, at least most of the time i use cavalry commanders but a lot of people have really moved away from that. Evil factions don't really have a cavalry commander, don't run much cavalry. But these guys do get dispersion, which is like on average the best elite skill for ranged units. So easy choice if you have DL Watchmen to pick up dispersion. And the absolute juggernauts, probably the best unit in the game in Tactics Evolved, Woz's Hunters. These guys are just absolutely ridiculous. They have Toned Body, who cares about that? They have Savagery, who cares about that? Because these guys have what is, in my opinion, the best elite skill and tactics evolved, dual blows. This goes up to a 90% chance of gaining follow-up every single round of combat. It turns these guys into Morgul Arbalests, in effect. I'm not sure why other units have Heartseeker at 50% chance of follow-up, and then these guys just magically get dual blows at a 90% chance of follow-up. But it is ridiculous. Their damage output is unparalleled. And uh, if you're playing TE, you're going to want to get access to these guys. If you can, you're going to want to give them follow-up. And then you're just going to go kill everything. I actually just looked at a boss report of an Asildor with like 4,000 Woses hitting a spider boss. And those Woses did over 617,000 damage. And I did not misspeak. 617,000 damage. Maybe for evil factions, that isn't impressive because you guys have alchemists and stuff. But for good factions, it is absolutely unheard of. 
Shire Protectors have some very unfortunate elite skills, but their baseline skills are just completely amazing, so it doesn't really matter. You'll probably just run light armor on these guys, even though it's boring, because their other two skills are Fearless, which is against higher tier enemies, you deal extra damage. However, these guys are T3 units, so unless you are constantly fighting T4 units, which you're probably not, because T4 units are expensive and time-consuming to train, especially in Tactics Evolved, um, most of the time, this isn't going to be doing anything at all for you. And significant assault, just like Oathbreakers have, you deal extra damage, it can stun, mad, or cannot recover HP targets. However, you're probably running these guys on a Rohirrim commander, and Rohirrim commanders do not have stuns or madness unless you have like a Discord helm. Uh, and they don't have a way to turn off healing. So maybe there's some super niche cases where you would run significant assault in general. I think you just crutch on the fact that Shire Protectors have amazing baseline skills and to just give them an extra 15% damage reduction against melee units. Next up, we have the Woodmen. Of course, they have light armor. They have armor break, armor break being quite bad. And they have parry, a chance to reduce the melee damage they take and deal extra damage. I think parry is overall a slightly better version of light armor. And I think armor break is very, very bad. So in general, I would just be running parry on them if you recruit them. Ents have a natural power, solid skill overall, especially for Ents. This is a 20% full combat damage reduction when battling on non-structure land. And probably most of your fights in this game are going to be on non-structure land, so you basically can't go wrong with that skill. Close quarters combat, I would probably never in my life run on Ents because Ents are not there to deal damage, so who cares if they're dealing 50% extra damage. And they have Haven, which says they receive less damage after being healed. This does go up to a 15% per stack, stacking two times. So overall, this can actually be a 30% damage reduction, whereas natural power is a 20% damage reduction. So technically, if you have a commander that can guarantee that Haven lasts at two stacks for the entirety of combat, then Haven is a bit better than natural power. However, on most commanders, you're just going to want to be taking natural power. Eagles also have a natural power. They have a remedy. Remedy I would use if you're using them on like Arwen or Radagast. You know, any commander that can consistently heal them. Radagast especially, this would be just ridiculously good on because he has so many healing skills and he has the beast healing every single round. And they have Pierce. I don't think Pierce is particularly great. It's, I guess, a better version of Armor Break. However, it only applies to the Eagles. But in general, ignoring defense in this game on a percentage basis is not super wonderful. I would have to make like a separate video explaining the math behind all of that. So in almost every situation on these guys, I would be taking Natural Power or Remedy. Spirit of the Wood. These guys are another just fantastic, absolute juggernaut beast. Amazing overpowered unit in Tactics Evolved. They deal absurd amounts of focus damage, and obviously focus damage is more difficult to mitigate than physical damage. They also have a natural power, solid choice on almost every single commander. They have forest protection, which uh, I would just ignore the fact that this even exists because poison damage is almost non-existent in this game. So who cares if you're taking less poison damage? And they have a remedy, a very good choice on those commanders that do consistently heal. I've seen a report this season from an Arwen who did something like it was a bit above 250,000 healing when using Cataphracts and Spirits of the Wood, both of them having the Remedy Elite skill, and the damage output was pretty incredible as well. So definitely a use case for Remedy and a use case for Natural Power. Last but not least, we have the Depths Defenders. They have Light Armor, kind of eh. They have Battler's Bane, plus 20% damage against melee units. Not the worst. However, in my opinion, their best skill is Staggering Blow. This is a bit of a doozy because it does a lot. Basically, they have a 30% chance to deal 60% additional damage and then also a 30% chance to stun the target for one round after attacking. So pretty good, pretty solid in my opinion. You're dealing extra damage and you are crowd controlling enemy targets. Overall, I think that is definitely the best. There's a lot going on with that skill. 
However, every single one of those effects is good. So overall, I think that Staggering Blow is just kind of a strictly better version of Battler's Bane, since this only applies to melee units, whereas Staggering Blow applies to every single unit. And since this video is already running quite a bit longer than I normally like to make them, I'm basically going to be ignoring Elite 3 skills for all of these neutral units. Most of them are one specific race that I talked about in the other video. So if you want to watch the other video, you can see which of these skills I suggest for each of the different races. However, since these all cost gold and gold is extremely important in Tactics Evolved, I would probably just be running disciplined on these guys all the time. They're also the most difficult to keep in stock because you just can't conscript them as quickly as other units. You only have one hiring queue and they have to march from wherever the camp is to your base before you can start conscripting them again. So disciplined is just going to save you a lot in the long run. Uh, there might be some specific cases where you'd want to run other skills, but that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with my opinion on the elite skills? Or if you disagree, let me know why. And thank you for watching.